So first of all, just uh, as John had said, I'm going to do my best to try and make uh, you an online teaching expert in about 15 minutes or less, um, and I'm going to fail at that. And I had a conversation with uh, Dave Breitzman early um, about one of the slides that I'm going to show you, and it really, um, one of the things that he said to me, and, and I think it's not so much me giving you as a faculty member and an instructor, um, you know, the permission to fail, but I think that we have to give ourselves at times as we kind of go through uncharted waters, just make sure, give yourself permission to fail. Not everything you're going to do is going to work out. Um, and I think if you, if you do that and realize that, um, kind of the pressure is off. There's a lot of things that you can use as an excuse now. Like I had no idea how any of this worked before. Um, it will, uh, I, I think it will allow you to be a little bit more creative, um, think a little bit differently and, and have some, some fun. So um, I'm gonna show a, a couple of slides here and I'm going to emphasize um, a few of the things that kind of I highlighted in maybe the, I, I saved it as the coronavirus prep um, PDF that I had sent out before, um, and hopefully make you aware of some of the resources that we have um, and that I'll be continuing to put together and, and try and put in your hands. So uh, the first thing, just a, a few slides here. Um, so I am going to share my screen with you and take you through that. Um, just as John had said, um, and I think you're going to hear this over and over again, and it was one of the things that, um, I mean, I don't come up with this stuff. I, as much as people say that I'm an expert at some of these things, I'm like, I just steal things from everyone else. Um, somewhere along the flood of emails that I got in the last week, uh, this phrase came up. Um, and I wish I remembered which email it was, but I'm sure I'll, I'll uncover it eventually. And it, it talked about really the focus on high touch. It's going to be way more important than all of the high tech things. Um, when we think of online learning, when we think of remote instruction, a lot of these things were happening well before the internet um, existed. Uh, and so we can really make use of tools that we have, but stay within to start out with, stay within your comfort zone. Um, remember that it's all gonna be about communicating with students, um, finding any way that you are comfortable, whether you're comfortable with email, um, whether you're comfortable with you know, giving your students your cell phone number, um, letting them text you, uh, if you have other avenues that you want to, um, to kind of pursue. Um, keep in mind the FERPA regulations and things that, that exist. Um, you, you really want to be establishing it within um, something that you've used the WLC EDU email for. So an example, um, it, it's a little bit different with Zoom, but when you send a Zoom link to your students through the WLC email, um, not only can you usually see them on the other end, but you know that's really one of the ways that we know who we're dealing with. Um, but start simple. Um, one of the things that I would want to tell anybody, um, not just people that are going to be teaching online, but people that are going to be teaching in the classroom, is really, um, you're going to have to think about the expectations you have. Um, and I really think that this slide, it's more about managing expectations of yourself, uh, as well as helping the students manage what your expectations of them are. Um, one of the first things, and I'll, I'll share some resources um, both on the, the website as well as um, kind of mention them today. Uh, Quality Matters, which is kind of like the compliance and accreditation for online learning. Um, that's kind of how I view them. One of their first things um, that they talk about and in their emergency guide that I'll share with you, one of the first things they say, uh, be clear uh, with your instructions because you are so adept at filling in the gaps when you are in the classroom. When you put out an assignment, you give the instructions, you're there right there when students, you can see the puzzled looks on their faces. Uh, you can kind of uh, fill in all of those missing pieces and they can ask those questions easily like, oh, is this supposed to be due on Friday instead of Thursday because we don't have class on Thursday? All of those types of things. Uh, when you're doing it here, just be really clear. Um, one of the things that I would recommend for anyone um, no matter how that the class is really getting delivered, uh, what your assignments or assessments might look like is to use uh, a steps to completion. Um, 
give them at the beginning of a week, like here's the things I need you to do. Um, it doesn't need all of the instructions for how to do each step, but just a little checklist of things like these are the things I need you to do this week. You're going to have to, you know, call someone. Um, you're going to have to set up this meeting. You're going to have to read this. You're going to have to write this, whatever it is. Um, try to be uh, clear with that and and keep in mind the little visual over here um, our expectation versus reality um, I have a feeling and uh, trying to do it once in the last semester um, I've been doing just the online part with some of my classes for four or five years now and I'm still in this area where I feel like I'm starting to get the idea and get it kind of managed and trying to get it to be a more of a straight line experience but um, you're going to you're gonna fail give yourself permission to do so. Uh, kind of going along with the high touch before, um, you, ongoing feedback, especially when you're working with uh, online students is going to be crucial. Um, you don't have to go out of your way to do it maybe completely differently. Um, most of the time, I, I think for myself when I'm grading papers, the thing that bothers me is, you know, I, I'm so used to giving feedback by writing on it with a pen and then handing it back to the student, and it's very easy. Um, it's still probably the easiest way, uh, but it requires me online to write it out with a pen and then scan the thing and send it to the students. Um, so eventually that just became too cumbersome. I started looking for different ways to do that with my students. Uh, but provide ongoing feedback uh, as much as you can, uh, not just the grades, um, you know, just reach out on an ongoing basis. When I do an online class, uh, I tend to reach out proactively at the beginning of each week. Um, I try to record just a little three, four minute video that just says, hey, here I am, I'm still alive. This is what I'm kind of expecting. I use that to kind of go over my steps to completion. Um, and typically throughout the week, uh, I might, as I'm hearing the questions from students come in, um, I will take those and compile it into either an email that I'll send out or a video or quite honestly, it's usually both um, that kind of go hand in hand. So some that want to just watch it, some that want to read it. Um, but feedback is going to be important. Uh, the idea of asynchronous learning, um, I would say embrace it. You're number one, um, and we saw in the email, I don't think we're going to be able to expect that all students be able to be in one place at one time. Um, so embrace what you can do asynchronously. Um, some things, some things you probably are going to try to still pull together and say, I'm going to do a Zoom meeting with my class. Um, embrace the fact that you can record that meeting for those that don't uh, show up and then be able to save that. And that's one of the handouts that I'm working on right now is just some visuals on how do I record and then distribute that meeting um, when I'm done with it. But anything that you can provide for students to do on their own time, um, I mean, that's going to be that's going to be key, which is why I always focus on mini lectures, um, little snippets of information, uh, some of the things that I can provide that they can watch and view. And then if I do want to get together synchronously, then we can talk about the things we can discuss. I can answer questions. Um, I will speak just for my math class that it's it's going to be a lot of, you know, I have always wanted you to become good at reading a technical manual and being able to follow these things, but I've always been there to kind of interpret for you. Um, so do these things, bring it back, um, and try to reserve as much time just to talk to the students. Uh, don't forget during this time to use the colleagues that you have, the people in your department, the people that you've grown to trust over the, the years, or you know, in my case, the short time that I've been here, um, use them. Uh, don't, as this image says for right now, don't actually make that physical hand contact, um, but use your colleagues. Uh, Jared sent out earlier this week an email um, kind of listing a few names that were on there, people that uh, we've kind of looked to in the past and people that have worked with me, some that have never asked me a question before, um, which I'm like, they must really know what they're doing because I've never talked to them. Um, so these people are available. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, even though my name's on the bottom of the list and conveniently grayed out a little bit so that it's harder to read. Um, I've been overwhelmed a little bit by how how courteous people have been about my time, but um, I've, I've 
I have the advantage that I've been doing this part of it, so I'm really focusing um, first on trying to gather materials that will help everyone. Um, so in this, like today, I haven't really gotten as many of the email responses out that I normally would because I've been kind of putting some things together that I will blanket cover. And then um, feel free, don't hesitate, that's what I'm here for. I'm sure all of them will feel the same way. Um, and then before getting into just a little bit of the nuts and bolts, um, take this opportunity, since you have the opportunity to fail, be creative. You know, don't forget, have fun doing it. Um, you know, you're going to be able to try things now you never would have thought. And when I started teaching online, my entire philosophy of education started to shift. Uh, I now, and this is where the advantage comes in, I now view every class that I teach as I'm designing this class to be taught without me. Um, the fact that I get to be in the classroom with the students only makes it easier. So uh, do that, and I'll, I'll steal it from Dan Johnson and just say, keep smiling. Um, as you're going through all the things that you're doing, as you're recording yourself, get used to talking to yourself into a, a camera, um, you know, being, you know, kind of isolated like that, um, but keep smiling and that idea of isolation, don't forget, um, you know, and I know Rhoda will talk about it a little bit later, to, to keep in contact with your students virtually um, instead of physically. Uh, I want to highlight then a couple of resources. Um, I, I know um, some of them have kind of come out in, in the past. One of them I've been for the last year or two um, slowly building and it's ramping up quickly. Um, a resource just from the Instructional Design Center at WLC. Um, you'll notice when you go there and the, the, the link if you wanted the entire thing would be um, wlcidc.com slash coronavirus. Um, I will have some resources. Uh, I'm right now compiling articles that I've gotten and had a chance to read through emails that just have good advice. Um, taking resources that other people have given me, you know, starting to put together apps and little guides on how to use those. Um, those things are available there. Uh, I have most of them directed at faculty, but in a couple of cases, they can be used for students, and I'll show an example. Um, one of the things that's that's there and I, I emphasize is, you know, learn your LMS, um, become comfortable with what you need to be comfortable with. You might not need all of the features, but uh, it's for both Genzabar and Moodle, there are some videos there that will show you how to either do assignments that you can collect files from students virtually. Um, you can do discussion forums as well as uh, I can't remember, oh, online quizzing and testing. Um, some of those, those three basic features are kind of in a lot of courses. Um, people are giving quizzes, tests. Um, there are videos on there that the, these ones are directly from Genzabar. I've got some that I've recorded um, myself for you to use to kind of learn how to do that. And a lot of the things that are on there can also be used for both faculty and students. Um, one of the things that happens quite often in our adult graduate studies is remote presentations where we ask students to record those presentations basically by themselves. Um, you know, they give the presentation, then we post it on uh, online so that other students can watch it so that the, the instructor can assess it. Um, so I have some, some of those links. You're free to share those. It's just a basically a one-stop. Um, students can kind of see how all of those things work. Um, but that's where primarily I'm at is kind of learning those things. And so I want to close with just a, a couple of things to to maybe say if you if there are something on here that you're looking for, some of them already exist, um, and don't hesitate to reach out, even to call. Um, we can go through it on the phone. I can open up a Zoom meeting and show you these things, you know, right on your device. Uh, but uh, know your LMS. I mentioned these things before. These are where most of this type of work is happening. Um, if you're having a paper that they need to turn in, you know, grades and feedback, discussion forums, quizzing and testing. I've already answered a few people who have been looking for ways to do quizzes and tests um, that didn't necessarily need the full proctoring um, service, which is, uh, which is a need in some areas. Uh, but they were looking elsewhere and didn't realize that the, the LMS that they were in, the learning management system, either the Genzabar or Moodle, had it for them. Um, as John mentioned, learn to Zoom. Uh, whether it's just hosting a meeting, um, making sure that you know how to share your screen like we're doing now. And one of the 
easiest things is if you don't want to learn a lot of different technologies, if you learn to Zoom, you can have a meeting with yourself um, and record it. So if you want to get in front of students asynchronously and just be able to say hi, um, use Zoom, just start a meeting by yourself, record it. And that's, as I mentioned, one of the things that I'm working on today is getting information on how do I take that recording and share it with, uh, with people. Um, that's also where I know I am amazed I've gone from as a high school teacher kind of restricting my students from watching YouTube ever like it's just a complete waste of time to now that is basically where a lot of my course materials are. Um, so I have, uh, I, I will recommend it. One of the things that people quite um, often ask me is about sharing video content and about just recording it and posting it somewhere. Um, the beauty of something like YouTube or Vimeo is going to be that it's, it can work with any device um, as opposed to posting it and then the file size. And then the last one um, that, is, that is on here is just thinking about some different ways that you can gather responses from your students. Um, some of these people are using, I have not used Mentimeter, um, I know Rachel Keel has, she's recommended it to me and it's going to be very quickly on my list of things to use with my, my students. Simply using a straw poll, um, I'll post these websites for you so that you can have them. Um, if it's feedback you're getting in a re research setting, you'll have some other options. But um, those are just some places to start. Think about your assignments and your assessments. Um, think about how they might change work on, as I mentioned before, managing expectations for yourself and how I can just be in contact with my students. Um, hopefully, and the last thing this was on in the introduction, if you missed it, um, if you have any questions, um, even if we don't get a chance to answer them in the open forum or if you don't wanna just email me personally and ask them, um, you will find the chat feature. Um, you can go ahead and, and post a question in there. Um, at this point, I'm going to start moderating that and kind of pulling together whatever questions for, uh, for the panelists to kind of answer at the end. So um, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, my cell phone, if I email you back, my cell phone number's on there. You can text, you can call, you can Zoom, you can do however you need me to meet with you. Um, I'll be here for you. Uh, and really, I've just been really impressed with the faculty so far. The response um, just has been overwhelming. Uh, stay positive, keep smiling, um, do what God's called you to do. And I think then with that, I will hand it over to uh, uh, Rhoda. <laughs>